In this video, we're taking a look at multiplying thirds when the numbers are different. So we've already seen what happens when we take thirds and the numbers are the same. So for example, the square root of three by the square root of three. And we've seen two different ways that we could think of that. We could think of it as root three by root three, and then they can both be written underneath the square root where we can write it as the square root of three by three, which is nine, and we know the square root of nine is three. We also thought of it, or thought about it, using our index laws, where we had root three, that could be written as three to the power of a half, you'll remember. So three to the power of a half by three to the power of a half, According to our laws of indices, if we have the same base and we're multiplying, the rule is that you can add the powers. So it becomes three to the power of a half plus a half, and a half plus a half becomes three to the power of one, which becomes three. So two different ways of thinking of the same problem. And we have two different ways of thinking about this next problem when the numbers are different. So if I take the square root of five and I multiply it by the square root of six, we can tackle it in the same way, where I'm going to say if it's root five by root six, what I can do is write them both under the same root and multiply them inside here which is going to be root uh, five by six, which is the same as root 30. I can also um, think of it using our index laws. So we already know that root five can be written as five to the power of a half, because that's what a square root means. It means to the power of a half. And the same with the six. Now, we encounter a problem here because we can't apply the first rule of our indices, which was if the base is the same, add the powers. But there is another rule that you'll find in the log tables that looks like this. And we're actually going to be using it in reverse. What we have is that the two powers are the same, the bases are different and the bases are multiplied, but we're actually moving in the reverse direction. So what I could say here is because I have five to the half, six to the half, I could actually write it as five by six and they both have to the power of a half. So I can write it like that. So this time I'm starting on the right, moving backwards to the left using the log tables on page 21. Then you've got five by six, which is going to be 30, uh, 30 to the power of a half square root of 30. So that's what we have. And you hopefully can see that actually both of these strategies are the same. They're using the same ideas, but the way in which we represent it, the way we write it down mathematically looks slightly different, but the strategy is the same underneath. So you're taking two separate thirds or two separate indices and combining them into one. And we get the same answer both ways. Another example then to practice, if we did root seven by root three, so let's get that up, root seven multiplied by root three. No matter what we think of it, whether you like to use the index laws or you like to just think of them as thirds and keep them in the same notation, what we're going to have is um, the same answer at the end. So I'm going to have seven by three under one big square root. So I'm going to have seven by three, which is root 21. Now, the thing to remember is this is almost exactly the reverse as the simplifying. In fact, it is um, the reverse of the simplifying. If I took, for example, root 45 and I said simplify that, what we did was we used to break 45 into factors where one of the factors was a square number. So we looked for square numbers that were factors of 45. We got nine by five. Hopefully you're starting to see the similarities. What we did then was we broke it up into two roots like this. And all of this from here, working backwards, 
back up to here. It's the reverse process of what we um, were doing over here. The simplifying is one direction and the multiplying is the other direction. So in this scenario, when we simplified it, root 45 turned into the square root of 9 by 5, which is the same as root 9 by root 5, which is the same as 3 by root 5. So you've already done loads of this already. You've just done it backwards. So we'll do two more examples. What if I had root um, 8 multiplied by root 2? So again, you can write it as one big square root. You'll have 8 by 2, which is going to be the square root of 16, which doesn't actually work out to be a third. It works out to be a rational number. That number is 4. If I was to think of it as the index laws again, just to show you that once more, what I would be changing it to is 8 to the power of a half multiplied by 2 to the power of a half. What that would become then, using that rule that we saw earlier on, where we had, uh, I'll write it over here this time, a b to the power of p is equal to a to the p, b to the p. We're on this side of it. We've got two things that are multiplied together. They don't have the same base, but they do have the same power. And what we can do is work backwards in this direction. So I can actually write it as, 8 by 2 because that's what these two things are doing when they're side by side there's no symbol written in between it's implied that it's multiplication so we've got 8 by 2 why I can't just write 8 and 2 side by side have a think about it that reads differently that reads as 82 but a and b side by side that tells us it's multiply so do make sure if you're putting in numbers that you put in the multiplication symbol they're both to the same power, so it's to the power of a half. 8 by 2 is 16. 16 to the power of a half, that's the same thing as saying the square root of 16, so I get 4. I'll do one more, and I'll do it both ways again. What if I had the square root of 5 by the square root of 10? So doing this both ways, if I start out with the thirds, I can make it one long third which becomes 5 by 10, which becomes root 50, which we think about, is there any factors that are square numbers that can go into that? No, so it's just going to be root 50, so I can't simplify it anymore. Over here then, I'm going to do uh, the same thing using the index laws. So I'm going to have, instead of root 5, I'm going to root write 5 to the power of a half multiplied by 10 to the power of a half. Then, because they have um, the same powers but different bases, I'm going to use this rule over here. So what happens is I'm going to have 5 by 10 in the same bracket and I'm going to put it to the power of a half. And then I've got 5 by 10 which is 50, 50 to the power of a half. Remember, that's the same thing as saying the square root of 50. So if they say, give your answer in third form, you would always bring it back to this. You wouldn't leave it as a power. You would leave it um, with the root inside in it. Another question we might get asked is if we had something like this. So root 2 minus 1 by root 3 plus 4. So we're going to have to tackle it using um, our strategies for multiplying out brackets now. So whatever method you like, I like um, the array model. So I'm going to draw out my array model here where the first bracket goes on top and the second bracket goes down the side. So the first bracket is going to be root 2 minus 1. The second bracket is root 3 plus 4. And into each box is going to go the area of that box. And how I get that is I do the down by the across and I write the answer into that box. Now, hopefully you're getting a little bit more confident with thirds so that you don't have to write it out the big long way every single time unless they've asked for it unless they say completely without using your calculator show us this 
But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say root three by root two, and hopefully you're able to see that root three by root two, what you can do is write it under one square root and do three by two, which gives you six. Over here, the yellow by the blue, it's minus one by root three. We know how to multiply that already. Root two by four, you put the four in the front, becomes four root two, and minus one by four then to give us the yellow and the orange is minus four. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to write it out. So I get root six minus root three plus four root two minus four. And we're going to see, could I simplify that further? Um, could I write them as the same surge? So we talked about this before, about the apples and bananas. If they're not the same surge, we can't add them together and we can't simplify it. So that is as simple as I can make that. So it's not the nicest of numbers, but that is it simplified. So you're now combining your skills that we had from algebra with multiplying brackets and using the distributive law. So we were talking the other day about the associative and commutative law. This one uses the distributive law, breaking up those brackets and multiplying them um, in parts. So you can either use the array model or you can use the rainbow method that we talked about, or you could um, split up the bracket into two. That was another strategy that we had coming from first year.